Welcome to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. I'm Tony Guerra, the pharmacist and author of the Memorizing Pharmacology book series, bringing you mnemonics, cases, and advice for succeeding in pharmacology. Sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Let's get started with the show. Okay, I wanted to go over male and female reproductive pharmacology suffixes. I'm Tony Guerra, your host. Just wanted to uh, make sure that, I say suffixes, but we're going to see some things that are in between, which are technically infixes uh, versus prefixes and so forth. So let's just take a look here uh, at what we're kind of dealing with. So testosterone, a lot of people think the own is what makes it a uh, certain type of drug, but really we're talking about these male hormones. We're really talking about the STER, S-T-E-R for steroid. And you'll notice that sterone is also in progesterone, but the male uh, hormone is testosterone, uh, brand androgel, which is a controlled substance. Uh, it can uh, be, uh, I guess addicting is the way to put it. Uh, and it's an anabolic steroid, something that is going to build up muscle versus, remember, catabolism, anabolism, catabolism breaks down or crushes, anabolism builds up. Uh, estrogen, the E-S-T-R, uh, is, uh, was premarin, and that came from pregnant mare's urine, so the P-R-M-A and I-N for premarin. And then progesterone, the progestin, uh, this is the other half of it. So... When we look at these individually, you know, I always think of the four A's with testosterone. We've got this really brave guy here and this really anxious guy here. Uh, but there is that addictive potential. It is C3. It can cause anxiety. Okay? can cause acne. So kind of think about, uh, you know, really, what is it like to be a high school guy is what I was thinking. It's like, well, you've got to deal with um, potential for you know, addiction with uh, you know, whether it's video games to other stuff, uh, you've got anxiety being, you know, accepted by your peers, you've got acne, and then aggression as you kind of go through puberty and all those things. So um, testosterone, that's kind of testosterone in a nutshell. We then go to kind of understanding, okay, well, let me identify which one is the progestin and which one is the estrogen. And the way, again, to do that is the GEST, G-E-S-T, is the progestin, and the E-S-T-R is the estrogen. So this is Trisprintec, which is a, um, uh, one of the uh, combined birth control pills. Um, slight risk of butt blood clots. Um, smokers really should just be using progestin only. Uh, there can be significant cardiac effects. And how long do you have to wait as a smoker? Well, really, you should be waiting almost a whole year. Uh, before if you stop smoking uh, to go on an estrogen type uh, to avoid that increased cancer risk. Uh, in terms of cancer risk, uh, you're going to usually see breast and cervical go up, endometrial, ovarian, and colorectal go down. Uh, but the pictures here, the breathe and the heart uh, are specifically for that smoking uh, to use progestin only versus a combination pill. Um, when we talk about alpha blockers and 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, uh, we're really talking about a kind of a 1-2 punch for BPH or benign prostatic hyperplasia, where the immediate relief comes from tamsulosin or the Flomax. Okay, so this is an alpha-1 blocker. The problem is it doesn't actually fix the problem. It just allows, you know, easier urine flow. So you're going to see some of those adverse effects with you'll see with any alpha blocker first dose phenomenon or syncope where somebody gets kind of a fainting uh, hypotension reflex tachycardia though these things are much less likely than their than tamsulosin's cousins like doxazosin terazosin or terazosin however you pronounce however you want to pronounce it um, and those guys but uh, still a possibility because it's alpha one uh, really, pregnant women is a contraindication. And you're going to see that this is kind of the first thing you give, and you'll give them together, but this is kind of providing relief during the months that it takes for the other drug to work. 
So uh, it works quickly. It's going to eventually be removed. You're not going to give both medications uh, for the long term. So what we're trying to do long term is we're trying to shrink the prostate. And dutasteride or finasteride, those are the two drugs that do it. Avidart is dutasteride. Finasteride is one of those weird drugs that has two brand names for two different indications. So the Propecia side of finasteride, a much smaller dose, is going to help with somebody's male pattern baldness or hair growth. And then the Proscar is prostate care, so caring for the prostate that has BPH. So the 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, it's really stopping DHT. That's what it's doing. Um, you've got to worry about ED, decreased ejaculate and libido, gynecomastia and hair growth. And you can see that somebody who's dribbling or having this issue with BPH might say, you know what? Those adverse effects are not worth it to me. Uh, so compliance may be an issue. Uh, contraindicated in pregnant women, you don't even want them to handle it. You would have to double glove if you did. Uh, and then uh, it takes up to six months to work. So again, tamsulosin first, and just think of the alpha as the first, um, you know, alpha one as the first, and then the five alpha as the one that comes a lot later. And because five months is close to six months, you can think of five alpha as about how long it's going to take for this to, to hit its full effect. Uh, sildenafil versus tadalafil. Um, so these are for erectile dysfunction. Uh, the stem is a fill, A-F-I-L and they increase nitric oxide to help with the erection. So phosphodiesterase, five uh, inhibitors. Now priapism or priapism, however you decide to pronounce it, is a four hour erection and an emergency that uh, there are some treatments for it. I'm not gonna go over them, uh, but uh, the, the key is that um, if it's a four hour erection, you really don't uh, want to um, you need to go to the hospital. It's contraindicated with nitroglycerin, uh, and that's because it would create a tremendous drop in blood pressure. And this is the big difference. Like, well, why would I take Viagra versus Tadalafil? And when Viagra first came out, it was sildenafil. Okay. But once Tadalafil came out, you saw the bathtubs or the two bathtub commercials. And the reason for that is that it lasts up to 36 hours. So Sildenafil, if you think the time is right and the time is wrong, well, you're out of luck. But Tadalafil provides more forgiveness for the entire weekend. And that, and that was the kind of big, big difference uh, between the two. Uh, just a little bit about our story with the, the triplet pregnancy. For those of you that don't know, well, right now I have three 11-year-old girls. They'll be turning 12 in July. Uh, but there are a couple of drugs that kind of came along uh, on the ride with us and that allowed them to be uh, how they are now. But uh, metformin uh, was the drug that we used, not clomiphene. So clomiphene is a drug that uh, is often used uh, for those that can't um, conceive. And and metformin uh, just did the trick. And so there's only a one in 10,000 chance of having triplets. Uh, it's very unlikely. Um, so that was great. But what happened was uh, we had the chance and we did not take it to abort one of the children um, to increase the chances of the other two. And we, we turned that down. And that was what we thought was, oh my God, we've killed them all because they almost came out at 19 weeks. Uh, one of the girls just kind of decided, and she is the alpha. She's the one that's just like, um, she's already moved uh, to, you know, uh, another room in the house, uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, on her way out um, at 11. <laughs> But uh, magnesium, what was needed to stop the contractions, uh, she, my wife went mag toxic, uh, and nifedipine, the calcium channel blocker, the dihydropyridine, um, suppressed the contractions uh, long enough um, for them to start getting beta uh, which is that steroid injection that helps uh, with their lungs. And uh, they were delivered at 27 weeks and three days. So the magic number is 28 weeks. Uh, we got almost there. Uh, it, it was actually, I think, time for almost another shot uh, coming up. And unfortunately, they didn't get it. That would have made it a lot easier for them. But, uh, you know, uh, just uh, really, really lucky. And, um, you know, this was our first, second, and last. And I, I have a whole blog at AnkinyTriplets.com. But just to, I just want to show you, I think I talk too much about the words and don't show you what the impact is. 
But this is what happens when you when the medications go right and you discover these things and you can have someone that's as tiny as they are uh, survive and thrive. So uh, this is Brielle. Um, <clears throat> We thought she was praying, but maybe she was just kind of relaxing and just kind of putting the, you know, the hands to the side. Uh, our entrepreneurial one, uh, this is Tegan, and she's got her $20 bill right there. But we were just trying to show how small they really were. So if you look at your, you know, billfold and take out a dollar, you can see they're just an inch or two bigger than the dollar bill or your iPhone, really. Um, this is, if you just want some perspective, this is my index finger. And um, this is Rianne who's wrapping her fingers around my finger. So just tiny, tiny. And you can see just how, how um, thin uh, that skin is uh, as they're in the giraffe. Okay. And they're, they have their uh, sun, <laughs> call them sunglasses on, but they have their little visor on there because they're trying to avoid cornicterus uh, and they're under the UV light. And then I think this picture really shows, uh, as I'm taking the temperature under the arm there, just how tiny uh, they were and how fragile they were and just uh, what a real miracle it was. So just uh, thankful for all the, the medications and, and how it all worked out. Again, this information is provided for informational purposes only, not intended to provide or should not be relied upon for medical or any other advice. I urge watchers, listeners, and readers to consult with a medical professional with any medical condition. Again, if you need me, Tony the Pharmacist at gmail.com. Thanks for listening to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. You can find episodes, cheat sheets, and more at memorizingpharm.com. Again, you can sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Thanks again for listening.